Hey gang and welcome to your very first Docker tutorial. So then, I've been meaning to make a Docker tutorial for a while now, but it always got sidelined because there was another series that I wanted to make first. But now I've decided to bring it the attention it deserves and create a crash course all about it. So Docker is one of those things that sometimes gets overlooked by new developers because at first glance it's hard to understand why we might use it but it's definitely worth investing your time into because it can make developing applications either on your own or in a team much easier to manage. And the way it does that is by using what's known as containers to run applications in isolated environments on a computer like a Node application, for example, or a React application, or a MongoDB service, or something else entirely like a Python application. Now, we'll be talking more about containers later in the course, but the crux of it is this. Imagine if I was in a dev team, and I was making an application in a Node.js environment, and that Node.js version that I needed for that application was a very specific version that had a feature I needed to use. Now, also imagine that I wanted to share the application with another person on my team so that they can run it on their computer as well. Well, before they do that, they'd have to set up their development environment to match mine to make sure the application runs correctly. For example, they'd have to have the same version of Node.js installed that the application needs to run correctly. They'd also need to install all the project dependencies and set up any configuration like environment variables to make sure everything works the same way. So there'd be a significant setup process just to get the application running on another computer. Now imagine the same scenario, but with multiple other applications as well, all requiring their very own specific environment setup. And these applications might need to be run on multiple different machines. Well, that would mean a lot of setup every time we want to run a different application, which requires a different development environment, even on our own machines, because different applications might require different versions of Node or Python or PHP or something else. And that's where Docker and containers come into play. So you can think of a container for now as like a box or a package that contains everything our application needs to run. So all the source code, dependencies, the correct runtime environment and versions, etc. And this container can run our application then in isolation, away from any other processes on our computer. So it wouldn't matter what versions of Node or Python or anything else is installed on our computer because everything the application needs to run is inside the container. And then this makes it much easier for me or other people in my team to run these different applications on our computers. And we wouldn't need to worry about setting up different versions of anything or installing dependencies because it's all in the container itself, a predictable, consistent and isolated environment. The only thing that I or someone else running these containers will need on their computer is Docker to manage those containers. And that's at the heart of what Docker is all about. It's a tool for managing containers. So again, this is a simplified overview of what Docker and containers are all about. And we'll look at more detail into how they work later on and also how they can improve the deployment of applications to a server as well. Because much in the same way that containers can be run on your own or somebody else's computer, they can also be pulled onto your production server. And that way you don't need to configure the server because all the configuration and setup is in the container already. Now you might be thinking, well, what about virtual machines? Can't they solve the same problem that containers solve? And yeah, they can, but there's some differences which sometimes make containers a better option. First of all, each virtual machine that you make runs its own fully blown operating system with its own kernel. And that's running on top of your host computer's operating system, whatever that might be. But containers don't, they share the host computer's operating systems kernel. And so they're more lightweight than virtual machines and less bloated. It also means that they're typically quicker to start up and they use less memory on your computer. Now containers do include a slimmed down version of a specific operating system, but they still use the host machines kernel under the hood. So essentially containers are much more lightweight and quicker than virtual machines, although both can solve the same problems. And there will be times when you'd prefer a virtual machine to a container. So it's not a case of one is better than the other for everything. 
But anyway, now we have this kind of bird's eye view of what Docker and containers are all about. The next step is to install Docker and start using it. We'll be doing that in the next lesson, but first of all, I just want to finish up this one with a few side points. So first of all, before you start this course, you should probably have a little bit of experience in web development in general. Maybe you've created Node applications, React sites, or something like that. Nothing specific, but you've got a general understanding of web dev. In this series, my code examples are mainly going to consist of Node and JavaScript, so it might be slightly beneficial if you know a little bit about those, first of all. So how to make, for example, a simple Node Express app, or how to use Nodemon but it's not absolutely essential. I'm also going to be using Docker with React later in the series, but again, you don't really need to know much about React to learn the Docker side of things, but I'm not going to pretend that it won't be useful to know the basics. Now, if you want to learn some of that first, I've got loads of tutorials available all about Node, JavaScript, React, and much more, both on YouTube and the NetNinja Pro site. So I'm going to leave some of those links to those other courses down below the video. I've also created course files for different lessons in this tutorial series. You can find them all at this repo, Docker Crash Course, and I'll leave the link down below the video. So if you wanna see the code for a specific lesson, for example, lesson five, you'd select the lesson five branch right here, and then you'd see all of the code inside that branch. Now, if you wanna download a specific lesson, you select the lesson, then go to this code button and select download zip, and that's gonna download a zip folder of that particular lesson for you. So again, this link to this repo is gonna be down below the video. So anyway, that's your introduction to Docker. In the next lesson, we're gonna go ahead and install Docker on our computer. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up, and I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.